Hey, this is another video by Pet Rock, and today I'm working on my wife's 98 Ford Mustang. And today I'm going to be changing the rear differential fluid. This differential is a 7.5 inch differential with 2.73 gear ratio. While I'm working on this specific differential, the steps shown in this video apply to Ford 8.8 .8, uh, rear ends. The only real difference would probably be where the location of the fill hole is. So the first step is to get the rear end off the ground. You want to do it so that the differential is actually as low as you can possibly get it because on this vehicle the gas tank is pretty much in the way and so you want to get the axle low so you have more room to work. The way I did this was I put jack stands just to the inside of the lower control arm mounting bracket on either side and that allowed the rear end to drop down at its full extension. I also have the front end up on ramps. You don't have to do that. I just have it done this way because I was working on something on the front of the car earlier. You want to set up a catch pan underneath the differential because once we start removing these bolts here, oil could start to drip out. And gear lube has a distinct odor that is not very pleasant. So uh, you want to try to catch as much of it as you can. So you just remove all the bolts except for the very top one. You just loosen that one a couple turns. The reason being is we need to pry this cover plate away from the differential and we don't want it to just drop when it comes loose. So these are half inch bolts, just unscrew them. There's one bolt that is special and it contains the differential identification tag. On some differentials there's a bolt that has a stud coming out of it that this tag is attached to. You need to keep track of which one that is so you'll put it back in the same spot and also put the tag back on. On this differential there isn't a special bolt, it's just a normal bolt like all the others. So ultimately don't lose track of this tag. It tells you all the information about this differential, what gears are in it, what size it is, and things like that that you'll need for potential service later if you ever need to get parts for it. See, and there's the tag. So this last bolt, you just want to undo a couple turns. Okay, next we need to break the seal of the RTV that's holding this pan on. So you find a good pry point, like this part against the dif differential, and pry up around it. And you'll hear it pop like that, at which point the fluid will start to come out. So you just get your screwdriver in there and let it drain. At this point, once the differential has been loosened, you can take the top bolt out. Just be careful not to drop the pan. Okay, now once you've got the cover off, you wanna take a can of brake clean and hose this all down. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses when you do this. You don't want to get brake clean in your eyes. Make sure to also do this in a well-ventilated area because some brake cleans can be more noxious than others. So once you've given its initial hose down, you want to put the transmission into neutral and rotate the drive shaft so that the differential case and gears will rotate so you can inspect them all. What you're looking for is you're looking at the teeth of the ring gear as well as the teeth and operation of the spider gears. If you see any chunks missing uh, or if you see any abnormal wear, then you need to look deeper into getting a differential service. You want to look at the wear pattern on the teeth on both sides. A good wear pattern is where the majority of the wear is in the general middle of the tooth on both sides. If the wear pattern is far one side versus the other, or up or down, or something like that, then you're in need of an adjustment. Depending on where the wear pattern is will determine how difficult the adjustment is. It could be just as simple as new shims being put in here and here to move the uh, ring gear in and out, or it could be as complicated as having to add or remove shims from the pinion on the other side of the differential. You should also rotate the spider gears and you do that by rotating one of the tires in one direction or the other, like this. You want to inspect all the gears. You want to move them back and forth, like that. And that'll discover problems like I'm having here where this, ge this gear is actually loose. So if you look closely, as I slowly move one side, You can see this gear moving up and down. It shouldn't do that. You can also see it when there's no tension on the gear. 
like that. Same thing happens on the bottom. Now hopefully it's just that the spacer is worn out and that it's not the uh, housing itself that's damaged uh, because replacing spider gears in here is actually fairly simple. I'll be covering that under a separate video. But primarily while rotating you're just look you're mainly looking for wear patterns and potentially loose or damaged parts. Okay, now that you've inspected all the gears, you want to take a paper towel and scoop out as much of the remaining oil as you can. I'd advise putting on gloves because this is one messy and two gear oil just stinks. While you're wiping out the bottom of the differential case, you should look for a reasonably sized magnet at the bottom of the differential case, or sometimes it's actually on the differential cover itself. This magnet is used to help pick up any metal particles or shavings or anything like that from your differential as you're using it. You should take that magnet out and clean it out pretty well with uh, some brake cleaner and some rags and just reinstall it back into the place it was when you found it. For some reason on this differential, there is no magnet. I don't know why. I'm gonna have to go pick one up at a local auto parts store and install it. On this differential, there is a magnet on the drain plug. However, that magnet's really small and tiny and I prefer to have a larger magnet like my uh, truck does or like the one in the transmission pan. So the astute viewer will notice now that I have a new spider gear set in my differential. Through the magic of video editing, poof, it appeared. I'll add a link in the description on how to replace these gears. It's actually not that hard. I also replaced the outer axle seals and bearings. I'll add a link in the description to that video as well. Back to changing the fluid. So make sure you've cleaned out the uh, rear differential very, uh, very well. Next we need to remove the old RTV from the differential housing. Now one way of doing this is with a gasket remover that you can pick up at most auto parts stores made by uh, Permatex. This stuff is pretty nasty stuff. If you look, it actually made the can itself where it comes out of the nozzle, it made it rust. This is the normal side, this is the side with the nozzle, and it's all rusted up. So this stuff is not, act not good to inhale or even get on your skin, so make sure you wear gloves when you use it. It also needs to be used in a well ventilated area because this stuff stinks. It's pretty noxious. This stuff will just will basically dissolve the RTV so you can just scrape it off with like a paint scraper or a small razor blade. Alternatively, you can use just a small razor blade to basically scrape against these edges and try to get all of it off. That's a little bit harder to do in my opinion, although it can be done. It just takes a little bit more elbow grease. Ultimately, you want to have this surface as smooth and as clean as possible. Try to avoid gouging the surface. Okay, so what I've done is I've covered the gears up with a rag. You shake the can up pretty well and you just lay it on. Let's sit for about five minutes or so and this stuff will pretty much just wipe off. While you're waiting for that stuff to do its work, it's a good idea to take a pick and put it inside of each one of the holes to make sure that there's no RTV inside of the holes. If there is, you need to get that stuff out because it'll prevent the bolt from going in all the way and potentially stripping out the threads. So while we're waiting for the RTV on the differential to dissolve, we should put our attention to the differential cover. You have to clear the RTV from around the cover as well, making sure not to gouge the metal or damage it in any way. If there are any dings or bends or damage to the cover, you should try to repair it I have a video on how I did that with my transmission pan. It's pretty easy. Anyway, so I'm gonna use the same gasket remover on it. Shake it up really well. Spray it on. And just let it sit. While you're waiting for the RTV on the differential cover and the differential case to dissolve, you wanna turn your attention to the bolts themselves. So you need to clean them up, make sure there's no RTV on it, like this one has on the base, you want to remove all that. You also want to remove any that may be on the tip, like this one has. RTV that's on the tip like this will prevent the bolt from going in all the way and potentially cause the threads to strip out. Clearly you don't want that. So to make this easier on yourself, just grab a pair of vice grips, clamp down, and just go to town with a wire brush. So you want to clean each one up so that there's no RTV or dirt or anything like that on them and just do that for all of them. I have a razor blade that fits in this little holder that I got from a local auto parts store. Just take it and scrape. It 
See how easily this stuff is coming off? So once you got it most of the way scraped off, just take a little brush, a little wire brush, and brush the rest of it off. Next, take some brake cleaner and clean off any residue and any old oil from the inside of the cover. You want to make sure this is very clean. If it has any oil on it, the RTV won't stick to it and you won't get a good seal and you'll get a leak. Now we're going to move back to the differential. Now I'll take my scraper and just scrape off the RTV. Once you've got it pretty clean, take a wire brush and scrape off any of the excess. Okay, once you've got it clean, now you gotta remove any of the residue from the chemicals or even from the RTV from the sealing surface. So take a little bit of brake cleaner and hose it down again. You may also wanna make sure that no RTV got onto your gear set and clear off any that may have. Spray a little bit of brake cleaner on a uh, clean paper towel and give the outer surface one last wipe, especially on the bottom. If you have any oil dripping down here, it will prevent the RTV from sealing properly and you'll get a leak. So you want to make sure that this is a clean surface. Okay, before you put the cover on, make sure you don't forget to install the magnet on the bottom of the differential. In my case, this vehicle didn't have a magnet on the bottom. I don't know why. There's a magnet on the fill plug, however, it's fairly weak. I don't tend to like fill plug magnets because they're so small. So I went to a local transmission shop and picked up a transmission pan magnet. It only cost me a couple bucks. And you put it on the flat part on the bottom of the differential. Right about there. Anywhere within this flat part is fine. Just make sure it's out of the way of the gears and the carrier. If yours did come with a magnet, again, put reinstall it. But also make sure that you've cleaned it off thoroughly with uh, brake parts cleaner. So now it's time to reinstall the differential cover. You can either use RTV or you can pick up a gasket from your local auto parts store. Both will work perfectly well. It came from the factory with RTV, so that's what I'm gonna use. I prefer the Ultra Black. I pick it up in these uh, caulking gun size containers so that I can easily apply it in an even bead around everything. Okay, when you're applying RTV, you need to be pretty quick because this stuff dries fairly quickly. It's a good idea to have your bolts for the differential cover and all your tools and things like that by the differential when you do this. In some cases, like this one, there's plenty of room, so I like to put the RTV on the differential cover itself and then put the differential cover onto the differential. On some vehicles, like my Dodge Durango, there isn't very much room to get the differential cover into place, so I put the RTV on the differential itself and then put the cover on top. That helps prevent the RTV from smearing and getting in the bolt holes and things like that. Just apply a continuous bead around the differential cover. To evacuate any air bubbles that may be in the RTV is I like to take it and just spread it out. If you get any on the bolt holes, just take a pick and spread it out. Now we hurry and go over to the di differential and install it. So now you take your cover, stick one bolt into the top and slide it into place. Sorry if I'm blocking, but take one bolt and put it on a couple turns, take a couple other bolts and slide them in just barely by hand. Do not press down on the differential yet. Sorry if I'm blocking. You want to start all the bolts by hand. You do not want to cross the these. Now last but not least, take your identification tag and put it in the bolt hole. Screw all these down finger tight in a star pattern. Just until they hit the differential cover. You do not want to tighten these down yet. Okay, now you wanna take your wrench and you wanna tighten down each bolt until you start seeing RTV squish out areas like here and places around. You don't wanna tighten down the bolts all the way. You tighten in the star pattern.
Okay, you want to tighten it down until you start seeing RTV squish out and no more. You don't want to tighten these down all the way. You don't want to squish out all the RTV. A little bead like that coming out the edges is perfect. You want that kind of a bead all the way around. Now according to the RTV instructions on the bottle, it says you wait about an hour and then come back and tighten each bolt in a star pattern a half to a quarter turn. So while you're waiting for the RTV to set, it's a good idea to check the differential vent to make sure it's nice and clear and not clogged with any debris or anything like that. Uh, on this differential, it's on the passenger side axle tube. On some differentials, there's a hose instead of a little cap like this one has, or the hose may be coming out of the differential cover itself or some other location on the differential. Either way, all differentials have some form of vent on it to relieve air pressure as the oil inside the differential expands as it gets hot. So in this case, it's a half inch nut that you just loosen up. and drop on the floor. So on this one, you can't really look through it because there's a cap on it. On ones that take a hose, you just wanna look through and make sure it's nice and clear. It's also a good idea to take a pick or something and clear out the hole in here, make sure that's nice and clear. Either way, take some brake cleaner and shoot it through the hole. Make sure it's nice and clean. Gonna take a rag, clean out the bore. Take a little bit of anti-seize, just a little bit, like that, and reinstall. Just snug it down, and that's it. Okay, now it's been about an hour. So what you want to do is, according to the directions on the RTV tube, it says after an hour, come back and tighten each one of the bolts down about a quarter to a half turn, and that's it. So that's what I'm going to do. Do it in a star pattern. Okay, so now, according to the RTV instructions, wait about 24 hours for the RTV to fully cure before adding the differential fluid. In my experience, you can add fluid without any problems as soon as 12 hours. So basically, let it sit overnight and you should be pretty good. So I'll be back tomorrow. So now I've waited 24 hours and the RTV has now cured. So now it's time to fill the differential. The fill hole on this differential is right there. If you look at it from the driver's side, you can see I have a 3 8 extension in the fill plug to undo it. It's just a square 3 8 plug. I'd advise soaking it in some penetrating oil first before trying to cut it loose because these things are known to rust. So now just unscrew it. So if you look closely at the plug, there's a magnet on the end. This one's picked up a little bit of metal shavings, metal particles right there but it actually doesn't look that bad. I would have expected to see some kind of metal particles on here. Since my gears were worn, I'm more leaning towards this magnet not being sufficient as something to catch any metal particles in the fluid, which is why I added that larger magnet to the bottom before I bolted the cover on. Anyway, so you wanna clean this off, get some brake cleaner, and clean off any particles you find on here. Okay, so now you need to get fluid into this hole right here. There are various different ways of doing this. Do whatever works for you. I have a little hand pump adapter for my oil bottle. Just stick it in the hole and, and start pumping. The service manual calls for 80W90 oil. There isn't a real accurate amount of fluid to add. You basically go until the fluid starts to drip out of this hole. So just start loading it up with fluid. And there we go, it's all it's full. Make sure to have a catch pan underneath to catch in the fluid as it pours out. Now just put a little bit of anti-seize on the end of the bolt and screw it on in. So you torque this down to between 21 and 30 foot pounds. I like to half that number, so that'll be 25 and a half foot pounds. This is a tapered bolt. 
it's okay that there's a little bit of the bolt sticking out. That's actually normal. So now you clean up any oil. It's also a good idea to bathe this in brake cleaner so that any oil leaks that may occur can be easily detected. So that's pretty much it. So I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video and like to see more like it, please click the subscribe button.